Hey guys, welcome. All right, I'm going to try to make this video quick. I mean, that probably won't happen because it's me, but I've been trying to make this video all week and it just hasn't happened. I'm a level with you guys. We've had a great summer. We've done a lot of fun things. I've enjoyed my children, but I'm kind of getting ready for them to go back to school because we're all really craving some routine and they're just, you know, they're just here all the time. It's hard to make a video when it's never quiet. So Hopefully nobody will bust through the door while we're making this video, but for now it's just you and me and I wanted to tell you guys about what I'm doing in August because I'm very excited about it and I would love it if as many of you guys as possible could join me because it would just make it that much more fun for me. But I am not hosting, what's the word, I'm team, team captaining another um, Keymark Readathon. I've done a couple of these in the past and they're just so fun for me. So the first one I participated in, I was a team captain and my team won. It was such a blast and I made so many good friends. And then the second one I participated in, I was not a team captain, but I was participating on the winning team. So like you just might want to join my team is all I'm saying. But anyway, let me tell you real quick about what all that entails. Um, we have gone out of our way to make it as easy as possible to join, to participate, and to be able to read what you really want. You're just joining for the, the fun, for the competition, for the, the camaraderie, the community. Because as grown-ups, like, let's not forget that that's important for us. We need friends, we need community, and we need to, you know, have people to hang out with. Even if it is just in our computers or on our little phones, it's good. So. If you're not interested at all in joining the um, August TBR quest, you should still stick around because we are gonna talk about books. I'm gonna very quickly go over what all it entails to participate in the readathon um, or TBR quest is what we're calling it this time. Um, but then I'm gonna get to some suggestions and book suggestions that fit all of the prompts. So even if you don't wanna join in on the fun, I might have some recommendations for you. So let's get to it real quick. So it takes place the entire month of August, so no dates to keep track of. The 1st through the 30th, 31st? I don't know how many days are in August, apparently. Um, it's in the Keymark Discord. Now, Keymark is ran by A.R. Witham. Um, he's an author and a friend of mine. I'll probably refer to him as Andy since AR is his author name. But um, Keymark Discord, if you're already a Discord member, super simple. I'll leave the link to join below if you're not already a member. And then once you join, you're going to go to the channel that says like server roles and assign yourself the role of TBR Quest and you're automatically in. Um, if you're not familiar with Discord, just get with me and I'll show you how to sign up. It's very basic. You're, you know, Pick a username and password, and then you'll do the same thing. You'll click the link to join below. And if you have any questions at any given time, just ask me because as a team captain, that is one of my jobs that I'm happy to do. The other team captains are going to be um, Chels, and her channel is called Not So Secret Bookaholic, I believe. And J.R. Carroll, who is also a booktuber and an author, and then the fourth captain is Matt from the Beard of Darkness. So I will, of course, leave all of their um, channels linked below so you can check out their content. Um, but they're all great. We already have a really fun dynamic, and I cannot wait to get to know them because part of the fun is each week we're going to do a recap. And um, Andy's going to announce the points and kind of see who's in the lead, who's running behind. And we're just, it's fun. You know, we banter and we kind of rib each other. But really, we're just there to kind of hang out and talk about what our teams have been doing during the week. And speaking of what our teams are doing, let me just kind of show you what it looks like. All you have to do is read your books and then chat about them on Discord. And that sounds like, okay, but what, what's really nice is we get our own um, channel on the server. That's private and it's just for our team. So over the course of the month, you're getting to know all these readers. I mean, we might have 15 people in there, we might have 30, but either way, it's not gonna be a huge group. And you get to spend all month just like chatting about what you're reading, getting to know these folks, and really just hanging out. And as cliche and cheesy as it might sound, yes, there will be a winner announced at the end. I do hope it's me and my team, but we're all winners in the end because we had a whole month of making new friends and reading great books and just like, like making a conscious effort to um, spend time with your friends and spending time with your friends is a form of self-care. And I can't say this often enough, but adults deserve that. And like, we need that. So do this for yourself. It's really, really fun. Now, if you're thinking, 
well, that does sound kind of fun, but I already have my August planned out. Like, I don't want to be restricted by your rules. <laughs> we got you, okay? We went out of our way to make the prompts that you can read a book that fits the prompt to get the point for your team. We went out of our way to make the prompts so very broad that you can read pretty much whatever you want. So if you have a set TBR, but you still want to join, um, I bet you we can make your TBR fit into our prompts. But the good news is if you don't have a TBR, it's not really your thing, you don't plan, I'm going to give you some suggestions that will easily fit into the prompts, but chances are whatever you got on your shelf, we can help you fit it into a prompt, or you can yourself. I mean, they're pretty, pretty simple, pretty black and white, but um, it is a TBR quest. So the goal here is to work through books you already own, work through things that have been sitting on your shelf and you've been saying to yourself for months or years even, I'm going to get to that someday. Like that's what we're trying to do. Um, the, the maximum books, the maximum amount of books that can count towards points is five. And the reason we set it at five is because some people read a lot more than five books a month. Like I usually read about eight books a month. You know, it's not a flex. It's just what works out for me and my lifestyle and all that stuff. Some people, they're lucky and they're proud of themselves and they should be if they read one or two. Here's the deal. No one is going to force you to read five books. We want you to have fun. We want you to be comfortable. Now, do I want you to push yourself a little? Do I want you to, um, you know, find out the boundaries of that comfort zone and maybe push it a little bit? Like, sure. Like, how proud of yourself would you be if you normally read one or two books? And instead, this month, you're like, holy cow, I think I just read five books. That's fun. Like, that's kind of the excitement we're going for. But if that's not your jam, like you're not super competitive or you're just like, I'd love to make their friends, but my schedule just doesn't allow me to read that much. That's okay. Like, we really just want you to join. Now, if you join and you read 10 books, that's fine too. But the maximum amount of points you can earn is five points for five books. And we gave you 10 prompts to pick from. So you can use any of these one time each and you can uh, earn five points. So I'm going to go through real quick and tell you what the prompt is and then give you a couple of suggestions. Okay. So the first one is Gendry's Forge. And this is simply any book that has a weapon on the cover. And we specified that a boat, you know, a warship, you know, something like that, a galley can count as a weapon. So for my first suggestion, I'm going to suggest um, Red Seas Over Red Skies by Scott Lynch. This is book two of the Gentleman Bastard series. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there have read The Lies of Locke Lamora, but you haven't read the rest. You should read this. It's book two, and I think it might be my favorite of the three that are currently released. So check this one out, and it has a ship on the cover, which we are saying a ship can count as a weapon. Now, usually when I think about a book with a weapon on the cover, I think of like Faithful and the Fallen or uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, because in my opinion, those are like iconic weapon covers. But I'm going to go with something I never get tired of recommending to people, and that's Kings of the Wild, because it has a lot of weapons on the front. I mean, we've got a battle axe, war hammer, um, swords all over the place, daggers. Like, this is loaded with weapons. I never get tired of recommending this to people. It's one of my favorite fun fantasy reads because it's equal parts fun. Like, you're going to get through this really quick because it's just paced so well and you're going to have a blast. But it's equal parts fun and, like, actually good. So definitely read this if you haven't already. It's it's very special to me. The next stop on our TBR quest is The Black Cauldron, and that's any book with a dark cover. Again, so broad. Fantasy loves their dark covers. So I picked two to suggest you guys. I have not read this. This is Kate Elliott, King's Dragon. But this is something that I want to start this year, so I may start it in August. I may not. But look at that cool dark cover. So if anybody wants to read this, um, let me know, and maybe we can read it together in August during the TBR quest. I can't talk about dark covers without mentioning my favorite unsung hero, and that is Son of the Black Sword, which is book one of the Saga of the Forgotten Warrior by Larry Correa. I think this series is criminally underrated. I wish more people read it and talked about it, but I love this, and you're going to have a blast. Um, another thing, this is a very quick read, meaning it's snappy, it's paced well, there's awesome fight scenes, there's cool characters, it's a page turner, and it's only about 400 pages, so it's not something that's going to take you all month. The next prompt that you guys can choose from is Enchanted Forest, so that means an animal on the cover. You can throw a rock and hit a book back there with an animal on the cover. We love it. 
Um, I'm going to suggest Shadow of the Gods. This is book one of the Bloodsworn Saga by John Gwynn. Book three is coming out pretty soon, so this would be a great time if you haven't read the series to get started. That's a dragon. You're like, oh, but that's not a real animal. Well, we're reading fantasy. Of course it's a real animal. That totally counts. Or you could read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. For some reason, I always think about this book when I think about summertime reads, just because I read it on vacation. It was not the best vacation choice, in my opinion, but it is a favorite Stephen King book for me. Um, check it out for yourself. It definitely has an animal on the cover. The next stop on our TBR Quest map is the Cantina Mos Eisley. So that stands for any sci-fi book. Again, guys, we're giving you so much leeway here. Any sci-fi book. I have a couple suggestions for you. This is Eversion by Alastair Reynolds. Another one that I really think is like an unsung hero. I thought this book was awesome, um, but I never hear anyone talk about it. It's kind of a strange book. It took me a while to get into it, but once I got into it, and then once I realized what was going on, like my mind was blown. I love this book. It is hard to think about modern sci-fi without thinking about The Expanse and check out. Ooh, 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 look at those straight edges. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. This is Leviathan Wakes and it is by James S.A. Corey and it is book one of The Expanse. I haven't read these yet. I don't know if I'm going to read it in August because I don't know what I'm going to read in August yet. But if I need to pick up a sci-fi book, I, this might be the one because this beautiful edition has been, has been calling to me for a while. The next stop is The Rebel Encampment and that's our prompt for any indie book. So if it's independently published, you can read it for this prompt. Um, of course, you can read independently published books for any prompt, but this one, you can just pick any one you want to read, any genre, um, anything. So I'm going to recommend a couple for you. Most of my indie books are on my Kindle, which my grandma has, and you guys know I like to hold stuff in my hand. So I'm just going to go with a few off of my shelf that I've read and really enjoyed. The first one being Thrice by Andrew D. Meredith. Um, this is a nice one that's uh, pretty short, like it's about 320 pages. It read very smooth for me, so it felt like a fast read. And what I loved about this book is that it felt intimate. Like this is the story of a father figure and a little boy, but the magic in the world still felt big. So like an intimate story, but with big magic. You don't see that very often, and I think it's really well done here. And he doesn't love when I do this, but I am going to promote Andy's book, The Legend of Blackjack by A.R. Witham. I love this book. I thought it was really fun. It was exactly what I needed when I read it. And I love the tone. I love the story. I love the characters. It had everything I like in books. So definitely check this one out. I did the audio personally. Um, and Andy narrates it himself and he's just brilliant. But yeah, this book has a lot of bookmarks in it and sticky notes because I just had to talk about it after I read it. I'll link that um, review so you guys can check it out. But this is a fave for me. Next is The Switching Spell. And this one just means any book that's outside of your typical genre. So I typically read fantasy. So for me, this would count for maybe dipping my toe in a little bit of horror or literary fiction or historical fiction or something like that. So I cannot talk about books outside of your typical genre without mentioning Lonesome Dove. Now, if you're thinking, I don't think I would really like Westerns. You like this book. <laughs> Everyone likes this book. This is a perfect novel and it is known as one of the great American classics for a reason. I got maybe 19 pages into this book before I was like, oh boy, I love this. And it really does have all of the elements besides magic, of course, that fantasy lovers will love and appreciate. It is epic in scope. It has a quest. It has found family. It has um, really bad, bad guys and morally gray, good guys. It has coming of age tale. Like I could go on and on. It has great world building, even though it is United States of America, he still like paints such a vivid and beautiful world. If you're a fantasy lover and you love a big, chunky, epic book, you will love this. That is a really big book though. So if you'd like something a little um, shorter and faster in pace, pick up a Michael Connelly Bosch book. This is Concrete Blonde. This is the first Bosch book I read, and it was a perfect entry point. I had fun with this book. As soon as I finished, I gave it to my husband, and he read it too. We both had fun with this, and he liked it so much, he started binge-watching the entire Bosch television show. So check this out. You may actually like it. Next stop is The Throne Room. Now, this prompt just means any book with royalty or a political intrigue. You guys, we read fantasy. 
find me one book over there that does not have royalty or political intrigue. They just do. So I can't mention political intrigue without bringing out the goat. Um, this is my favorite book of all times. This is my ragged, old, worn copy with notes and sticky notes and highlighter and pens and, ooh, it's so good. Um, I do have beautiful copies of this book. But by the way, um, the room we're in right now, this is my guest room. And we are in a transition because we're remodeling. So about half of my books are behind me. Half of them are in a different room. So all my special books are in the other room. Um, but anyway, this one, this is the one I love the most, though. It really is. Look how, look how special it is. Anyway, if you've never read this, or I don't know, I don't know. I don't think rereads count. I was going to say, if you haven't read it in a while, I'll have to check with the boss. I don't know if rereads count for points because we this is a TBR quest. Like the point is to knock things off of your TBR. But if this has been on your TBR for way too long and you're like, I'll read it if he ever finishes the last two books. Shush, shush. Just read it. This is an incredible book. So reading Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire, excuse me, incomplete is still better than you know, most everything else. So definitely pick this up if you've never read it because it has the best political intrigue. The other one I want to recommend, um, I used the sentence, this has the best political intrigue I've ever read since A Game of Thrones. And I didn't get to talk about it a ton last year because last year I was on a break and I didn't do like a, you know, book of the year, top 10, all that kind of stuff. But this series right here, which is the Serentine Mosaic, um, it's a duology by Guy Gavriel Kay. And this is book one, and it's Sailing to Serentium. Is it Serentium? Serentium? I've heard both. Just tell me. I can change. I can change. I promise. Um, I loved this book. And I did, like I said several times, this has the best political intrigue I've read since George R. R. Martin. Um, I loved this series. So if you've had it on your radar, but you're not quite sure, it is dense. This isn't something that I would probably recommend to someone who doesn't read much at all or is you know new to fantasy. It kind of reads a little more like historical fiction. It is in a fake world, but it's kind of like a, a mirror image of some actual historical events. But um, it is low fantasy. So if you want something that's like really epic, big fantasy with the hard magic and stuff. This isn't it. But oh my gosh, I love this book. I thought the writing was beautiful and the characters and the story. It took a little while to get into, but once I was in, like, oh, I loved it so much. So can't recommend this enough if you're really looking into a uh, political intrigue. Next is A Summer's Ball. And this is any book with a romantic occurrence, intrigue, plot line. Like as long as there's romance in it, it's a thumbs up. So I do not read a lot of romance. And so when I was thinking about this prompt, I was like, okay, what are some of the books that you've read that aren't romance, but had like a really, really memorable romance in them? And of course I came up with several, but what's funny is I had to work for it. It's just not a plot point that is um, like a selling point for me in a book. And so it's not really the element that sticks out the most in my mind. But since this is a TBR quest, if you still have Red Rising on your TBR, you haven't read it, you've been meaning to get to it, you're going to find out within pages that Darrow, the main character, has a deep love for his wife. And I find that to be romantic. If you want something that's much mushier and steamy, you've got to read this, Outlander. You are, I mean, if you know, you know. Like, most people know the reputation. And they ain't lying. I thought it was steamier than the show. And the show was clearly, you know, <laughs> it's a mix between historical fiction and fantasy because there's a small fantastical element um, but mostly I would call it historical fiction. I love this. Next is The Sorcerer's Stone and for this we mean a book one of a series. Okay I love this prompt because the way I see it you just read four books like you're you should be proud of yourself. You've knocked a good chunk of your TBR off so why not start a whole new adventure and add you know more books to your TBR in the process. Um, if you're going on an adventure, like this is a quest after all, I think it's time to start, you know, start a new journey. So of course I'm going to recommend Assassin's Apprentice. This is book one of The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. This is my favorite completed series. Now it is 16 books. And for a lot of people that's like, 
Pearl, I know you love it. I want to read it, but that's just, that's just daunting. I get it. It's fine. It's fine because it's a 16 book series that is divided up into chunks. And so this is book one of the first trilogy and a trilogy is called Farseer. And this is of course, Assassin's Apprentice. Um, then the title can be a little misleading. It's not very assassiny, but it's a beautiful story, a beautiful coming of age story. It has some of my favorite magic that gets explained more and more as the series goes on. But this is a really, really nice book one. And it is only, I know Robin Hobb books have a reputation for being very chunky, but this guy is not so big. It's less than 400 pages. So, you know, you might just consider starting the Realm of the Elderlings because why not? Now, this one is shorter. It's only a seven book series, but it is a trip. And like, I mean that in every sense of the word. And that's The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Book one is The Gunslinger. This one's great for a TBR challenge because it is not very long. It's just over 200 pages. So this is something you can knock it out. You can feel accomplished. And then afterwards, you're going to want to talk about this book because it is good, but it's weird. And you're going to want to read book two. So if you've ever considered um, reading some Stephen King, but you're more into fantasy, this is his fantasy series. So you're getting a little bit of both. You're getting Stephen King's writing style and his character work and you're also getting his like wacko bizarre ideas but it's fantasy and last but not least is the halfling village and this means like a novella so any book that's under 200 pages again we're making it so easy for you guys to be able to get those five books in because nothing makes it easier than a nice little shorty um i picked a couple to show you guys this is untethered sky by fonda lee and I read this this month and I quite enjoyed it. Um, for the very, very small size of this, I was impressed at how well she built up the world, established the rules, and built a nice little plot and got me attached to the characters. So this is, let's see here, about 150 pages and I quite enjoyed it. I do recommend. This is a book, I think I read this three times because it's just a book that sticks with you. This is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I am a Neil Gaiman fan. I know his style isn't necessarily for everyone. Um, it reads very whimsically, I think is the best way to put it. I think this would be considered magical realism, but it is fantasy. Um, this book is haunting. This book is heavy, but luckily it is short. So if you want something that's a little more serious, it's going to kind of like sit with you, make you think and go, I wonder what that meant to him. This is what it meant to me. This book is pretty moving. It's incredible. And it is under 200 pages. Another little shorty I want to mention is The Night of the Moon, and this is by Gregory Contaxis, and it is the novella that goes with The Return of the Knights. So I'm going to make this my team book. You do not have to read it to be on my team, but I'm definitely going to read it in August, and I'm going to encourage as many people as possible um, on my team to read it with me. Um, Gregory is an indie author who has just been like a really cool friend and um, I've enjoyed getting to know him. And I just love the way this book looks. I love the concept of it and I'm very excited to get to it. This would fit in so many prompts. First of all, it's our team book. Second of all, it has a dark cover. It has a weapon on the cover. It's by an indie author. Um, there's so many, I'm sure there's romance in here. Like, is there a girl and a guy? Like that seems to happen. Just saying. Um, there's probably royalty. There's probably political intrigue. Like this will fit on so many prompts. So if you're on my team, mm -hmm, um, I hope you read this with me because I really want to, I've been meaning to get to this for forever. And so I thought what better time to get to it than right smack dab in the middle of my TBR quest. Um, and I can get friends to read it with me because that's always the most fun way to read. So I hope you got some good suggestions on books you might want to read. I hope I didn't make your TBR longer, but join me in August and we can chisel away at our giant TBRs together.